Hey everyone, so today we're having a quick look at 20 different tablature or guitar tab articulations. Now all that means is it's little things that you'll find in guitar tab that you, little symbols that you'll look at and you might not sort of understand. And if you're learning the song, you know, without listening to the music or maybe you can't quite hear it properly, it may be a little bit confusing. Now remember in this specific video, it's very, very quick. It's just to get people sort of a foot in the door of if they're already looking at guitar tab songs or buying books that have sheet music and guitar tab as well, just to make sense of it all, okay? Now remember, this is a very short and quick video, okay? A lot of those techniques need a proper video explaining, you know, how to do the technique in the proper way and different camera angles and everything like that. And we will go into that later. This is just a really quick guide for those people who are already looking at guitar tab and already on their way to learning. Here's a semitone bend. We're gonna bend up to a G note, which is the eighth fret on the B string, and we're gonna bend up from the seventh fret on the B string. So here's what the G note sounds like. And we're gonna bend up from F sharp. So here's the bend. We're gonna to go to G. Now we're gonna try and bend up a tone or two semitones. Still we're gonna bend up to the note G, which is the eighth fret on the B string. But this time, instead of bending up from the seventh fret, we're gonna bend up from the sixth fret on the B string. So here's our G note. And here's our F where we're gonna start. And we're gonna bend up a tone up to G. Now we're gonna look at a slight microtonal bend, okay? Now what microtonal means is it's not a semitone, meaning it's not E to F, it's not one fret or a semitone, it's actually in between. So here's the E note, and here's the F, and here's a note in between. You can think of it as almost like vibrato, except it's only asking you to bend up slightly. Now we're gonna look at bend and release, okay? Again, using that G note on the eighth fret of the B string as our guide note or the note that we're going for, okay? So now we're gonna do a semitone bend and release. So what that means is, again, you come up from the seventh fret there, the F sharp, and we're bending up to a G, and then we're releasing back to F sharp. So we're going for the G note. So now we're gonna look at vibrato, okay? We're gonna look at small and then wide vibrato. Now we're gonna be playing the fifth fret on the B string. Now here's the fifth fret B string. Now that's just a normal note without vibrato. Now what vibrato means is it's very small microtonal bends up and down. You can almost sort of get it happening in a circular motion. Can you hear how that note sort of decays a little bit differently as opposed to if I just play the note by itself? Without vibrato, and then with vibrato. Now wide vibrato is just slightly bigger bends again. Again, you're not doing anything as crazy as... Nothing as crazy as that. Mainly just talking a little bit wider than the normal vibrato. Normal, just a little bit wider. Again, it all depends on what music you're playing, what sort of style you're into, and what sort of voice you want your guitar to have. Now we're gonna be having a look at hammering on. Now, if you can imagine you play the first note on your fifth fret E string, and with your third finger, you hammer on. You hammer on that seventh fret, as indicated. Hammering down, just like a hammer. Hammering down. Okay, so you only play the first note, and then you hammer on with your third finger. And that's it. Now we're gonna have a look at pull-offs. If you can imagine, pull-offs is exactly the opposite of hammer-ons, okay? So this time, let's have our third finger on the seventh fret of the thin E string. Okay, now we're gonna play that note once. And then we're gonna pull off, so we're only playing once. And that's a pull off. Now we're gonna have a look at a slide, okay? Now we're gonna slide with our first finger from the fifth fret on the E string to the seventh fret, as indicated. Now we're gonna have a look at a shift slide. Now the difference between a normal slide and a shift slide is in a normal slide, you only pick once and then slide. In a shift slide, you pick both notes. 
that's a ship slide. All that a trill is asking for is that you have your first finger on the fifth fret, third finger sort of loosely on the seventh fret of the high E string, and that you're trilling, you're hammering on and pulling off, hammering on, pulling off in quite a quick succession. That's all a trill is. So all a tap is is a hammer on and then a pull off. Hammer on, pull off. That's it, any finger that you like. I like the first finger because when I'm normally sort of holding my pick, if you can see that, when I'm normally holding my pick, I can just slide my first finger and still use it and slide the pick back. Now we're gonna have a look at natural harmonics, okay? Now some of the strongest harmonics can be found in the 12th fret. A lot of beginners sort of try and play them in the very middle of the string, okay? It's not, it's not as if you would fret a normal note sort of in the middle or towards the fret wire, it's actually very above the fret wire. So you could say that the 12th harmonics are between the 12th and 13th frets, okay? On that fret, on that metal in the middle, okay? So all you do is you rest your finger very lightly on top of the string. You're not pushing down, there shouldn't, you shouldn't be seeing the string bend or lower at all, okay? All you're doing is ever so lightly so it's not actually lowering the string. Then you play, and you can lift your finger off to let the harmonics ring out a little bit better. So now we're having a look at pinch harmonics. So you take the pick in your hand, okay? You can actually do them without a pick using a classical method, but that's a little bit more advanced. We'll look at that later. So when you're doing pinch harmonics with a pick, you only want the very top of the pick to be uh, to poke out from your hand, okay? So when you hold your pick normally, what you're looking for is you're looking for a mixture between a normal note, this is asked for on the third fret of the B string, you're after the mixture between a normal note and a natural harmonic, okay? So what you do is you pick the note and you turn inwards, that's how I do it. There's a, a lot of different ways how to do it. So you pick the note normally and then you turn inwards so that it brushes against your skin. And it gives it that sort of almost like a natural harmonic thing. And when you've got distortion going, you can get a lot of sort of pick squeals happening. Now here it's requested a pick scrape. Now what it is, is you get your pick and you scrape. You just ride it along the long side of the pick. Again, it's gonna sound different uh, with distortion as well. So now we're looking at muffled strings. Now muffled strings can be played anywhere along the neck. As you can see, you know, it's gonna give you different, different sort of tones wherever you are, but all it's basically asking is that you sort of mute the strings with your fretting hand and you still play them. Like that example, that's all it's asking. So now we're looking at palm muting, okay? Now when we palm mute, all that we're doing is if you play a normal E string, I'm just gonna pick that, okay, that's what you'll hear. Now, what it's asking for is muting, but this time using the very chunky, meaty part of your palm to rest on the strings. So when you play that near the bridge, you get that sort of a percussive sound. And of course, like, you know, bands like metal bands like Metallica with all of their palm muting, you can get that great percussive sound with this distortion as well. Now we've got an example of raking, okay? Now what that means is if you have a look, the only note that is visible on the tab is the fifth fret on the E string or the A note, okay? Now the two X's above that, that means that you can rake and you want that sort of a muted sound and then you end up, so you strike them all at the same time, but you end up hearing that A note. You know, all the virtuosos and by and all those guys, they do a lot of this sort of stuff and it helps sort of emphasize that final note. So tremolo picking, all that that is, is it means you pick the note many, many times. That's all that it means. So it means you pick the note many, many times before moving on to the next note. Rather than writing in five, 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 it's just five with these symbols. And it just means the same before the next phrase or the next note. That's all that tremolo picking is. It comes from a classical term. So now we're having a look at using vibrato or tremolo units, okay? Found on this bridge of the guitar or, you know, Floyd Roses, those sort of things, okay? Now, all we're basically looking at is in this example, it has actually indicated what the note it wants you to play. So all that it's asked is that you play the A note and then you use the tremolo to bend down. So you push the tremolo in to get to that G sharp or a semitone below. 
That's all it's asked for. And that was diving with the vibrato. Well, that's it for today, guys. Uh, again, there'll be further explanations into all of those techniques later on. This is just a really quick, quick guide for those people already reading tablature. And if you want to follow me on any of these different mediums, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, I make posts every day. It's a good way of finding out, you know, what sort of I'm doing and what's going on in my world. And of course, if you comment below, I will get back to you and reply. Now, if you've liked what you see, then definitely like this video and tell your friends and we'll be looking at more lessons later on. Okay.